Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Man here, welcome back to another episode. It's gonna be a hot day today. It's gonna be an outdoor climbing day today. Uh, yesterday was a rest day, but I had my fun in some kind of park or stuff. I did a little bit of uh, body strength exercises as always with the parallels and also a little bit of acrobatic, uh, you know, super beginner acrobatic stuff. It was pretty fun. Um, today, yeah, the weight is pretty much where it always is. Uh, I just got up and it's about, I think, 8 in the morning or something. And yeah, since it's an outdoor climbing day, we have to pre-cook our post-workout meal. Also, I'm due to a nice breakfast still. So I guess we're gonna throw in a little bit of a segment of the efficient cuisine here. <laughs> gonna be awesome maybe if, maybe you detect a little bit of a difference in my uh, kitchen by the way if you do so please comment down below it would be interesting for me and yeah let's get this thing started so today we're gonna keep things very very simple that means we're gonna make an all-time staple of the efficient cuisine with it, which is rice with vegetables so I'm gonna start simply with throwing in some rice here into my pot. Going in with some water here. By now I did this so often that I already can say how much water it needs for this kind of rice. So yeah, that should be roughly okay. And that goes on the stove instantly so that we can save some time. Just put it on top. Now onto the veg, we're gonna keep it simple yet again. Carrots, zucchini, broccoli. Let's do some cutting. Alright, so now these go into the pot, which is already starting to heat up, as you can see. So we save some time here, back on the stove. And to give this guy a little bit of a taste, we're gonna go in with some garam masala here as well. You can see that. And also some cayenne pepper. Done! Alright, so... <clears throat> Alright, so I'm still hungry and waiting for a breakfast, so we're gonna go with an all-time classic here yet again. Got two bananas, a little bit of chopped apple and also another special ingredient, um, soaked walnuts. So yeah, we're gonna see how that turns out. Soaking the nuts is actually very healthy if you want so you know it gets rid of a lot of the anti-digestive uh, compounds that the nuts of course synthesize in them because nuts don't want to be eaten nuts actually want to fall to the ground and you know sprout again and stuff like that so they um, you gotta trick them you know you gotta trick them a little bit to make them really really healthy so another advantage of soaking the nuts another advantage of this is that they're getting really soft and that makes them very blendable. So they blend really smoothly and make it like if a creamy consistency the whole smoothie. So yeah, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of water. And there we go. really like the creaminess and this nutty flavor, you know. The nuts go really well with the apple, I think. And this makes a really great flavor. Mm. And in the meantime, the rice is almost finished, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think we gotta wait like four more minutes or so. I'm gonna let this cool for a little bit and I'm gonna transfer it into our little, uh, jar here. Look at that. And for this part of the video, I'm going to jump into voiceover mode uh, since I'd like to give you a little bit of a commentary to the footage you're gonna see. And first, I'd like to mention that this was actually an awesome day in general. We could get our projects done in an almost, uh, I should say, superior manner, uh, contrary to how I expected it considering the weather forecast. So, what you're seeing right now is Torsten going for Odin's Rache, a super nice 7C of this sector. 
and he did it second go of the day i think third go in total um, basically straight after his warm-up which he did in this very same route as well and that brings up a point when it comes to warm-up strategy which i'd like to discuss here a little bit um, I'm personally a huge fan and or even I could say ambassador of the warming up in the project strategy and here's why. First of all, you're not going to waste any energy and skin in a route that's not your target anyway. Secondly, you will instantly get warm in the moves, you know, on the moves that you actually need later on for the send go. Instantly reawaken that muscle memory and stuff, allowing you to eventually send the project second go just like Thorsten did that day. Um, and which leaves you a lot of time actually and a lot of energy left to um, get onto something new you know checking out something new trying something new and eventually even sending a second or even a third route on the same day you know instead of wasting a lot of time and skin in like one or even two super easy warm-up routes so because even if you start in, let's say, the super easy warm-up classic of the crack, you know, which is already super greasy because, of course, everybody is doing it, um, you most of the time have to boulder up your project afterwards anyways because you need to get your draws in most of the time and you, as I said, you need to reawaken that specific muscle memory for the root and uh, so on and so forth so yeah basically instead of wasting some time and energy and skin essentially on the um, on super easy warm up, warm up route you know you could also instantly go for the project itself and warm up on the project itself now of course the big argument against this is that your project will very likely be very hard for you i mean otherwise it wouldn't be your project right and uh, you don't want to get injured of course by doing too hard moves uh, when not being warmed up so uh, here i'd like to say that it doesn't really depend on the grade whether a route is a good warm-up route or not rather on the style example you can start in let's say you're i don't know you're an 8a climber and you're going to the scrag you know there is this 6c pretty slabby um, all the other routes are kind of overhanging and of course harder because of that. But there is also this on the very on the very left or on the very right of the crag, you know, there is also this short, slabby, uh, little bit strange looking 6C which has only five draws and um, and it looks it doesn't it doesn't really look very readable and stuff. Uh, but you think, yeah, it's of course the easiest route of the crag, you know, and before you get on your 8A project, you want to try this, you want to warm up on the 6C now. Now it turns out while you're climbing the 6C that it is a super strange, uh, hard, somehow hard, small holded slab crux with lots of smearing where you're losing, I don't know, one centimeter of rubber off your climbing shoes and stuff. Your toes are kind of hurting because you're standing on your toes all the time. Your finger skin is already hurting because the holes are really small and sharp and even you're panicking a little bit because it's slabby and you, you're holding on harder than you actually needed to. And all these things come together and in the end this little warm-up route, this little 6C costed you a lot of a lot of resources you know that you could have spent in your project actually on the other hand you could also just have got on your uh, 8a and where the first 10 meters maybe if you're lucky of that 8a are actually kind of good holded actually kind of juggy you know until the crux comes which might be a boulder or something in a steeper terrain and this is actually a lot better although the route is a lot harder graded than the 6c it's a lot better warm-up route because the first moves are actually easy on bigger holds so slightly more overhanging um, you know perfect to get the whole body warm and stuff so as you can see um, of course it's not always the case it can be that your project is actually very bouldery and has the bouldery and has the boulder right at the start which is the case for my project that we're gonna see in a second um, in which case it's of course not so ideal to warm up in your project but I think you'll get the point here I would really like to know what you think about this um, what is your strategy usually when you're warming up do you go for the easiest route on the crag or do you uh, warm up right away in your project now Thorsten as you can see he just sent his project in a really superior style it was kind of cool to watch him doing that 
uh, really nicely executed and as you can see I'm also I also carried my little uh, meter here to the crack so that we can check uh, temperature and uh, moisture and the temperature was actually pretty nicely just about 19 degrees all the time the moisture climbed up from 70 to 80 percent and even above that in the during the time we were there and uh, yeah that's of course always the case you know when it's really hot during the day and there's gonna come some sun some thunderstorm in the evening so yeah, that's the bouldery crux basically of my project. Um, I think it's roughly 8B plus or something. It's a new connection of of an 8B slash plus into an 8A basically. But the 8A part doesn't really change the grade of the whole thing too much, I believe, to be honest. But anyway, this is a this is a route here uh, where you can see it's probably not so ideal to warm up in that route right off the bat, you know, because it's very bouldery. The boulder is very much at the start of the route, and it's kind of 8B plus, you know, really my limit. I mean, close to my limit. Okay, I warmed up in this route anyway <laughs> because I feel that I'm at the moment having I'm having so much boulder power, you know, that I I can handle it, so to say. But another tip that I would like to give you here, if you decide to um, try warming up in your project in the future, you really need to get your groundwork done, okay? You need to make a proper mobilizing routine at the ground. As you guys know, um, I'm, I have a video on my usual mobilizing routine up here on the channel. You can check it out if you like. And also get your stretching down right away. And if you do this properly, you will just get warm by doing that on alone, basically. And what I very much recommend then to do in, uh, in addition to that, basically, is gripping some holes, you know, traversing at the bottom of the wall on the rock actually and gripping some holes to get your fingers warm and the pros actually very often carry some kind of a portable hangboard with them as well which they can uh, mount onto the first bolt of the wall and then they basically can warm up on that hangboard and i did the two already and that's really practical i have to say it's really nice um, the only disadvantage of that is of course that you have to carry an additional portable hangboard to the wall but i mean yeah who cares when the when the approach is only one minute long, right? So, yeah, these are the tips that I can give you um, uh, that which should help you to warm up in your project when you want to save skin, energy and time for your actual project and you want to really focus your efforts into your project. So now, um, I think I am going to stick that boulder, which is actually quite an awesome boulder. It's really a sick route. Um, it's basically evolving around one big move to the left on a small crimp and then you got one really sketchy heel hook for the right heel and you really kind of um, stretched out between these two holes you know this side pull with the left hand and this heel hook with the right foot and from there you gotta go dynamically above that onto a pinch so here I'm sorting in the right hold with my right hand big move now to the left with my left hand kind of a back step situation here a really cool move actually and then a really balancey dance into this heel hook first pinch second pinch and you gotta crank that down really hard let your feet go and then you gotta hit into this pocket here this is three finger slot which is not too good and then reposition your feet one last move into the sloper and from here it's basically done, you make one easier move into this uh, side pull jug here and from there you can clip the next quick draw. And up until here this route is around 8B slash plus or something. And from here it goes to the left into this uh, really beautiful 8A actually, kind of endurance 8A which um, makes the whole thing slightly harder than the original version I would say because originally you would now go straight up a little bit to the right even and yeah so now here you get this beautiful endurance part added to the root which also gives you a little bit of a psychological factor you know because you don't want to fall up there anymore but it's really cre greasy already since this is a super classic of the crack of the crack and you really gotta be careful that you don't make any mistakes so yeah um that's basically the thing for this day it was an awesome day we could get everything done and a little bit of warming up strategy i would be really curious about your opinion yeah <laughs> Good. 
great day comes to an end. <sighs> we both sent the project. Yeah. <laughs> Thor meets Odin. <laughs> oh yeah. And now it's of course time for the beautiful post-workout meal. Yeah. Rice with gemüse. Garam masala. Mm. And, and some and can, some spicy, huh? Eh? Yeah, cayenne pep cayenne pepper. Mm. <laughs> so. Thank you.